It's the Daily 304's presentation of famous people, places, and events that shaped West Virginia. Welcome to the History Project. Today we take a look at John W. Davis. John W. Davis was no stranger to the White House. He counseled presidents and served in diplomatic positions. But had things worked out differently, he would have been a resident at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. In both law and politics, Davis was to the manor born. His father, John James Davis, was an attorney and member of the Virginia General Assembly. He attended the Wheeling Convention and later became a congressman of the new state he helped form. A prominent Democrat, John W. followed in his father's footsteps, also becoming an attorney and congressman, but his star ascended higher as President Woodrow Wilson made him his Solicitor General from 1913 to 1918, and his Ambassador to the United Kingdom from 1918 to 1921. He rose to greater prominence in 1924 when Democrats hoped to retake the White House in light of Republican President Warren G. Harding's Teapot Dome scandal. But when Harding died of cardiac arrest in August 1923, scandal-free Calvin Coolidge succeeded him. At the Democratic Convention, the party voted through its most prominent members until selecting Davis. But as the Dark Horse candidate, he was defeated in a landslide, winning only the southern states, but ironically, not his home state of West Virginia. Davis spent the rest of his years advising presidents on various matters. He publicly supported Audrey Hiss and Robert Oppenheimer during the McCarthy hearings and raised his younger cousin, Cyrus Vance, who had become President Carter's Secretary of State. By the end of his career, he had argued 157 cases before the Supreme Court, the most of any attorney in the modern era. John W. Davis's respected career did not land him in the White House as he'd hoped, but that didn't stop him from being a power player in the Oval Office.